This week in comic books, we get Detective Comics number 1061. And we get the Riddler doing some live podcasting, if you will. The question is, is the stuff he's saying, is it deep or is it dumb? We're going to break it down a little bit and we're going to look into that. Over in the land of Marvel, uh, we get Avengers number 57 and our introduction to uh, Soldier Supreme, who may very well have some other connections in comic book lore that I don't think anybody else is talking about. We're going to break that down a little bit too. And in the land of independence, we get Department of Truth came back out. And if you dropped off of it, which I understand a lot of people do that, you may want to come back. One of our favorite characters has returned. The one that really kind of breaks up the story. It throws a little wrench in everything. Uh, and I highly enjoyed it. We're going to talk about all that and a few other comic books right after the intro. Hey, what's going on, you wonderful weirdos? It's Pope Can Joe, and I'm back with another week of comic books, even though I went to a Comic-Con and spent way too much money, right? But I picked up a small haul this week. Uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to jump right into Action Comics number 1044. All right. Uh, if you didn't pick this up, basically we get the uh, origin story, if you will, of Test Tube Baby, known as Orphan. Little little on the nose with the names these days. Both of its parents died. So, yeah. So, <laughs> we jump into this. And basically, it's a lot of information dump in here. Like, why, what happened when the source wall broke. How it's filled with the woo-woo magic from the source, source wall. Uh, the transitions in here aren't very the smoothest things out there. Like, one minute we're doing flashbacks. And then we're doing what's happening currently and then we're dealing with mongol and his whole thing on this planet so it's very abruptly changed through here like you may have to read it twice just to understand like mongol's cool monster that he built uh, was actually a thing from the past that yeah it was weird it was just weird i don't know how to describe it it's not the smoothest transition out there um but basically superman's building another war world team to go do some fighting and we also get our glimpse into our scripted reset button in here. This is something that I like to call whenever a comic book story is having a big crisis and you, and you kind of might have to reset the entire universe a little bit, right? They did this in Dark Metal. We kind of got that in here too when we're talking about the Orphan Box and how it can reset reality and everything. Now, we already know that in other story, uh, storylines like Justice League and stuff like that, Justice League is dead, dead right we have our thing that can transition through time and space and kind of reset everything so again i never believed that they were actually going to kill the justice league or anything like that but in this universe right uh it looks like everything can be reset again just like dark well just like every crisis every crisis okay we're moving on to detective comics so like i said in the beginning intro so um Riddler's been kind of doing these podcast things, right? And he's doing this pseudo-intellectual thing, right? And it's cheap. I, I say it's cheap. It works, right? It's basically just, right, where basically you just ask a bunch of questions in an authoritative manner to make people act like they're questioning something in here. Well, unfortunately, one of our characters who suffers from insomnia, right, which is, uh, mental, well, it's a symptom of a mental illness. They never explain that properly. But anyway, <laughs> she falls for this and, and commits a, a, a murder, right? And then the scales of justice, literally a statue with people sitting on it. Batman has to go save her off. Of course, it's a booby trap, comic book tropes galore up to this point. But what I really want to focus on is this whole podcast thing. Because right here on YouTube... Uh, every, well, every platform, right? You always get these guys that just seem to be asking questions that make it sound like they're saying something, which the Riddler does in here. It is an effective form of communication and join people together, no doubt, because the, the motivation to answer is already guided through that. So is it deep or is it dumb what he was saying? Well, it was dumb, but it wasn't wrong. Right? You're not wrong for asking a question like, who are the people really in charge? Right? Or, will DC ever get off of their high horse and give us characters we like? 
you know, see what I did there? I asked a question and I made an assumption to the viewer and then you get to describe the rest of the scenario there. You not being unique, me not being unique, collectively can come to a conclusion of that without actually having to point it out. And that's pretty much what the Riddler did in here. And it, it, it happens a lot. It happens a lot on YouTube. <laughs> Especially. Right? So with that said, uh, it was a good story. I, I did enjoy it. I like this whole falling for this kind of pseudo-intellectualism that doesn't really mean anything or go anywhere. Right? It just causes people to act. Um, and probably the worst way. The secondary story in here wasn't too interesting. It's not even worth a review. It was so short. I'm not particularly interested in it. Uh, moving on. Thor. So, after reading this, I, I like swore in my mind of minds, thought that this was a reprint. Like, I went to go look it up. Nope. We get some Dr. Blake action. If you don't know who Dr. Blake is, uh, that is in the old school comic books with Thor. That's the... The, the human form he would change into. There's a whole backstory to it. They kind of explained it in the beginning here, not being too far off. One of the reasons why I thought it was a reprint. But basically, the, the synopsis of the story is, is really Loki's in charge of Asgard for a temporary amount of time. A war breaks out. The trolls, elves, ice giants, right? They go to attack. Loki's about the ego, not about winning the victory. Thor shows up, Odin shows up, supersonic machine, you know, MacGuffin thing pops into place, gets defeated, everything returns to normal. It's, it's an ego story. Check your ego type of thing. It was really cool reading this, though. It's it kind of good to get some of that old school nostalgia back in there, even in modern times, without it being a reprint. I thought that was smart, um, and it was done very well. Next. All right. So I promised you in the beginning, but I'm not going to spoil it. So we get introduced to Sergeant, and I'm going to try to say this name. I, I apologize if I mess it up. Zardos? Zardos. I'm going to go with Zardos in this. Sergeant Zardos, who's the Soldier Supreme from the 1940s during World War II. And this cat, I like this. But I'm an old man, so automatically the default for old people, if you don't, if you're a younger viewer watching this, Right? Once you get to about 40, you're fascinated with World War II. That's just the way it works. <laughs> okay. But all in all, in this, we kind of get a glimpse of a social uh, soldier supreme and his actions. Now, the Avengers are in the background kind of helping and they're hiding. Now, I missed the last issue of Avengers, so I'm not really sure why they're there. But I do like this character and i like the way this was broken out and we also get our first appearance of yeah a type of howling commando team in this one they're calling themselves the secret invaders <laughs> right and basically it's just monsters and stuff but it's 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 kind of cool. i always like these quirky kind of teams it's kind of cool especially this kind of knight rider character who drives a tank how cool is that? So, yeah, they're, they, they got an interesting premise. It's a great storyline. I really liked this story. We get some Mephisto action. For all you guys out there that are wondering where Mephisto is, he's in this comic book. There you go. He's not going to be in a show, I guess. I don't know. But, yeah, I really like it. So, what's the connection to Soldier Supreme and the rest of the MCU? Well, there are some other characters in the MCU that are connected with the uh, Swordsman way back in the day uh that are uh that had the same last name now does that mean anything no it's complete spec i would say it's probably a better spec than a lot of other things but there's kind of connection there right like his kids you can google the last name check the uh, marvel fandom again i don't want to spoil it i always think that finding something on your own gives you greater satisfaction so i would definitely take a look at that and probably i don't know i'm not really a spec comic book guy but, I mean, holding on to this, I mean, really, how much room is it taking up? Right? I can see this character going places. I hope it goes places. It was so good. Okay, moving on. Uh, Captain America and the symbol of truth. So, we left off with this whole um, a bunch of immigrants being uh, snuck into the U.S. on a train. Um, there was supposed to be soldier serum on the train. It wasn't there. Um, so, where's, where's, this, where's the soldier serum at? 
they hadn't figured it out by now, <laughs> it's because they're not paying attention. But um, our Captain America goes, uh, tries to battle it out, runs into Deadpool. Him and Deadpool are crushing it, right, at the super secret base that's trying to get this soldier serum, right? But there's a little problem. It's in the land of doom. And I like this depiction of doom. That's really smooth. I like that. It's pretty sharp. I like that. They're in the land of doom. Right, so what's going to happen now? Well, Doom's going to be Doom, and he's got an ego. Nobody asked him permission to be there. So let's see what happens in the next issue, which I'm surprisingly going to pick up. Even though it's not my kind of story. All right, next, uh, Berserker. Well, this, every issue of this is the same thing. Minus the flashbacks in this one. So our Berserker guy gets super-powered. Right? More than he was before comes to earth female berserker character is trying to fight him um it's just blood gore it's just a gore fest if you like super graphic type comic books this is right up your alley the truth is there's just really not much of a story in this particular issue it's just a quick snapshot of a person getting from point a to point b by going through all the people there and blood splattering everywhere that's it that's your story all right, next, Department of Truth. Hawk is back. Remember Hawk? We were introduced to Hawk in the Department of Truth as sort of this kind of go-your-own-way, do-your-own-thing agent set from the side of the Department of Truth, right? He was kind of, he's like a warrant officer in the Army, right? He's kind of over here from the rest of the officers. Officers are here, he's over here. Um, and kind of was responsible for a lot of these conspiracy things over the years. Um and he's back and it looks like he's going to go straight villain on this one which is going to be interesting um apparently he's going to give up the ghost he's going to tell cole's husband what cole's been up to lately which cole has been very secret of he doesn't want his partner to know husband i believe they're married i'm going to go ahead and say they're married husband uh what exactly he's been up to while he's on this new job with the Department of Truth. He doesn't even know it's a Department of Truth. It's a government agency for all he knows. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. We're going to throw some marital strife in there. You know, if you really want to get at somebody, no bother. Don't bother attacking them personally, right? Attack their environment where they feel safe. That's how you really crush somebody. Not saying that's advice you should go do. You shouldn't do that. That's hard. That's what villains do. <laughs> Alright guys, that is my haul for this week. i uh, got a couple of other things coming up here on the channel. Just want to tell you real quick, I have a walkthrough for Heroes Con coming through. And I have a uh, independent comic book review that I'm going to do. Very similar to this style here. They were comic books that I've been picked up either online or at a comic con. I want to do an independent showcase of these particular comic books. Because these cats don't really get a whole lot of publicity. Not that they're getting a whole lot from here. But I feel I should share those separately. Alright guys, I got nothing else. I gotta get out of here. Bye.